Bismillah, Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Statics, Chapter 6.1 until 6.3 We will be dealing with simple trusses, the methods of joints and zero force members right, So, um, this is a new chapter, uh, Chapter 6 In Chapter 6, we have trusses, we have frames and we have machines So, in this particular recording, we will have uh, We will deal with simple trusses, basically And also the method of solving, which is method of joints and then another thing, another aspect that you have to also understand is about zero force members, right? So um, I will put hopefully, inshallah, um, some picture here where you can see example of application for trusses, right? So there's one for trusses in two D, and then next we have trusses in three D, right? So hopefully you have seen some of this, something like this before to appreciate. Uh, the application of what we will be covering today right so that's an example and we will go into what exactly is a truss right um, so a truss is a structure composed of slender members joined together at their end points right so basically if you have members like this and member like this joined at the end right with a pin normally right so and then it's basically a combination of many members join at the end right so we'll just give, give you a, a example here another picture where this is a roof truss right so basically it is combination of uh, members and members and members join together at their end point right so that's basically a truss right um, there are two assumptions that is applied with, which leads to how we actually um, analyze and um, calculate and compute uh, the forces in, in each members afterwards um, the two, two assumptions is one is all loads are applied at the joints and the weight of the truss is neglected right? because the justification is the weight of the member itself is usually very small compared to the force that it carries right? so um, this has an implication actually but we go to the second assumption first the second assumption is that all the members are joined by smooth pins right? so if the pin at the joint have friction, we haven't covered friction yet, that it will be in chapter 8. But if it is, it, if, if the pin have friction, um, the analysis will be different also because the forces involved there will be different, right? So in trusses, we assume these two things, right? One, the weight itself is negligible and all the forces at the end, and then um, it is smooth pin at the end, right? So with that, the implication is this, for any member for example if you have a member like this like this because the force is only acting at the two end point here right and then there's no weight uh, for example so basically it is two force member it becomes two force member and we have covered before right two force member uh, just to refresh two force member is basically when a member have um, forces that act on the member is acting only at two particular points, right? What well, regardless of how many forces acting, but it is at this one and this one, for example, it becomes two force member. If you have another point where you have another force, then become one, two, three force member, etc. Right? So two force member, as we have discussed before, it is special because for it to be in equilibrium, it can be only two possibility. One is it is under tension. One is it is under compression. And the force, the, uh, the line of action of the force must be connecting the two points. Right? And for trusses, because previously when we cover two force member, it can be of any shape, right? It can be bending, etc. Like this one, for example, right? And forces acting on here only. So we will have forces must be, uh, the force must be. Uh, along this line, right, the intention of compression. But in trusses, because all the members are straight line like this, so the force will be along the the member itself, the line of the member itself. Right. So that is why it is special, right? When we have trusses, every member is straight. Uh, it is two force member, and the only possibility is either tension or compression along the line of the member itself. Right. So that's the important thing. Alright, so, and there's two methods actually to solve, one is method of join, one is method of section, but in our syllabus here in this university, we only cover method of joints. Method of joints is basically when you zoom in and focus at the joint, basically it's the pin itself that connecting all the members, right? 
So you focus on the member and you draw the free body diagram of that, not, not the member. You draw the free body diagram of the joint, right? Hence, the, the, the free body diagram will be just exactly like what you have drawn in chapter 3, I think, right? Where you have free body diagram of a particle, right? Um, so, in terms of step of analysis, so there's two possibility, right? One is that in any given trusses, for example, we have, let's say we have this member connected to this member, connected to this member, and then we have force, and then we have support here and support there, right? And what we have learned before, all the support will have its reaction force, right? X Y component, X Y component of the reaction force, for example, right? Now, and if this force is given. So there's two possibilities. One possibility is that you can actually solve straight away the force in each members, right? Um, how to detect is basically, let's take this point as, a, as, a, as an example, right? So if you draw the free body diagram, we have the force F here, and then we have the force from this member, and we have the force from this member here, right? And we know it must be along that line because of this, and this is uh, assuming it is tension. Now, um, hopefully you understand that this is tension, this is compression, right? And if you draw the corresponding point that is attached to, right? The force here corresponding to this force is like this, right? And here is like that, correct? And you can see for tension, because this is clearly under tension, um, the way we draw is the force is going out from the joint, the point, right? So for compression, the way we draw like this, right? With y because it's just corresponding to this, right? It must be opposite because when you join, it cancel each other, right? So as you can see, for compression, the force is going into the joint, going into the joint, right? So in this case, if you draw like this, we assume it's something like this, meaning it's tension, right? Meaning we assume this member is tension. We assume this member is also tension, right? Um, now, so when you draw free body diagram in this case, whether the member is in tension or compression, normally it's an assumption, right? If you have calculated until the end and you get positive, then the assumption is correct. If you get negative, the assumption is wrong, meaning it's the opposite way. If you assume it's tension, you get positive, it is tension. If you get negative, it is compression, vice versa, right? Hopefully you understand that. So, yeah, that's one possibility. In, okay, we just uh, we haven't got back yet to the initial point that I want to stress. Now, when you draw something like this, you can see how many unknown that you have for that particular point, right? So and because the free body diagram is only for particle, the only equation that we have is summation of f x equal to two zero and summation of f y equal to this zero, right? There's no such thing as moment because it's point. There's no distance. So the the, num, the maximum number of unknown that we can solve for one particular free body diagram is two, right? So you can check. Okay, in this point, if I draw free body diagram, this one is unknown. This one is unknown, right? Given that this one is given, right? So meaning that you have two unknown. Can you solve? Yes, because you have two equation, right? So yeah, okay. Then I can start at this point, right? So um, if I change the scenario. Right. For example, it is something like this. Something like that, right? Now, if we imagine how to draw the free body diagram here, right now we not only have two unknown, but we have one, two, three unknown. Right? If we draw the free body diagram, this is known. So one, two, three unknown. Can you solve now? You cannot, right? So that's the way that you should be able to imagine from the beginning, right? Um, in this case, in this particular case, okay, here three unknown, here you have one, two, three, four unknown, here you have three, you have um, four. So you cannot straightway solve um, at the joint in that particular case. If you, if in, in that case, you have to calculate the support reaction first, right? Basically, you draw the whole uh, truss just and then you have the forces and then you have the support reaction right so let's say x y x y 
you solve the support reaction first um, and then you can use the support reaction that you know and to start here or here etc right so that's the thing right so there's a possibility where um, like this you do a free body diagram here you can straight away solve these two and then after this is known you can solve here for example to get this one for example or this one right so um, whether you have to solve um, the support reaction depend on whether there's any point in this trust that you can start to calculate or no right if none available then you have to solve this one first for the whole trust and then with that value you draw the fever diagram of join and join and join right so basically that's the first step um, you need to draw the fever diagram of the entire trust to get the support reaction if it's needed if not you can straight away draw fever diagram of any joint right and then solve right and then basically you repeat again and again right because here for example after you have known support reaction for example then you can start here to solve this and this right and then you go and move here to solve this and this for example and then you repeat and repeat until whatever the question wants is uh, answered right so now zero force member um so another thing because now we, we, we understand already what is two force member and another thing is zero force member zero force member by the name actually you can uh, assume or I think you can guess that it does not carry any load it is not carrying any force right so zero force member right so now there are two types of uh, inspection um, that you can do um, for visually visual inspection you can straight away say okay this is zero force member right in some question it can be very useful in terms of making the question very short right um, yeah okay so I'll put the picture somewhere here I think um, so that you can understand the explanation right so the first type of um, this first type of inspection right one is if a joint has only two non-collinear member and there is no external load or support reaction at that joint then those two member at are zero force member do you understand? maybe I repeat right? if at any particular joint that joint only have two member connecting it to that joint and there is no external force there is no pin, there is no uh, roller whatever there is no external force Meaning both, both member will be zero force member for sure, right? So if you look at this picture here, right? Um, it circle that uh, red circle two there, two red circle here, where at point A, if you can see, okay, uh, maybe I have to clarify what is non-collinear, right? So um, basically, this. if at any particular joint you only have one member and two member connecting to it, that right? for example. And there's no external force, there's no force, there's no roller, rocker, etc. So, in this case, and it is non-collinear. Collinear meaning that this is collinear, it's making one line, right? So, this is non-collinear. So, when it is non-collinear, both will be zero. In this case, you do not know because it be, in this case, this value will be the same as this value which is to be determined, right? So, in this case, for sure, both is zero. So, going back to the picture just now. Uh, so at point A, you can see that it is having two members and non-collinear, so both will be zero. At point D, similar, right? Two member, non-collinear, no external force, zero force member, right? Um, so why is is important? Because when you know those those are um, zero force member, um, the the whole structure that you have to analyze where the, the, the member is getting any load is simplified from the original like this to become like this right so um, then it becomes simpler to solve right so that is why sometimes it is very needed that you have to, the ability to identify zero force member from the get-go before you even draw anything right um, second okay that's one inspection this is the second type of uh, inspection visual inspection right um, if there's a three member from a truss joint for which two member are linear, 
and there's a no external load and the action and join then the third one is zero force member I, okay I'll repeat basically if at an in particular join you have three member one two three for example right um, three member connecting to a joint and there's no external force there's no force there's no um, pin there's no roller whatever and the two is collinear there's two collinear making one line the third one this one will for sure be zero right because this will be just having the same force opposite and this one will be zero should be zero otherwise it cannot be equilibrium right so that's the second one so we'll just take a look at this picture here in this truss, if you look at point C, there's three member, so two is collinear, so the third one will be zero, right? Meaning AC will be zero. And then at point D, if you look, there's three member there connected to point D, two member making one line, uh, the third one, which is AD, will be zero also, right? So member AC is zero, member AD is also zero in this picture, right? Hopefully, you understand. All right. So, just to test your understanding, so we'll go through some picture over here and just try to see can you identify which is zero force member, if any. Right. So, take a look at this one. Right. And if you need to, to, to think for a while, you can pause the video. I, I will not wait too long because there's no one here and I do not want the video to be too long. Right. So, I'll just wait for just short time. But if you want to think first, uh, you, you can pause and think and then continue right it's up to you right so in this diagram here um, you can see at, uh, at least one right at point okay we'll start at point G if you look at point G it is three member there right you have three member and two is collinear two making one line so the third one which is CG the member CG there will be zero did you identify that one or not? Right, so that's number one. Number two, at point D, right? At point D, um, you have three members connecting there, and then um, two is collinear. So the third one, which is DF, right? DF will be zero. Did you get that one also or no? All right. Now, um, after we have known that DF is zero. When we go to point F right now, at F, there's only three members left, right? Because after we know DF is zero, basically that member doesn't have any um, force, right? So basically it becomes zero, right? You can just take it out. So after that, you can focus at point F. So you have three members, two is collinear, the third one, which is CF, will be also zero, right? So you have identified three um, zero force member right now right now just a question if you look at point b right there's also three member there two collinear is point is member bh zero force member what do you think the answer should be no right why because you have external force of two kilonewton there right so hopefully you understand the concept by now right okay so we'll go for another um you, you can identify right now okay so if you need to pause you pause and i will just uh, i'm going to be continue to discuss right if you want to think pause it all right so now in this trust okay how many unknown how not how many unknown, how many zero force member did you identify it should be two right one is if you look at point d you get bd is zero and then if you look at point f BF is also zero, right? Right. So you have two, right? Now hopefully you have to identify the two. All right. What's next? All right. How many zero force member here that you can identify? This is quite interesting. You can pause because I'm going to discuss straight away. If you want to think, you pause. But otherwise, I'll continue. All right. So if you start from the far right at point D. At point D, you have two members, non-collinear, and no external force. Meaning what? Meaning both will be zero. So, CD is zero, DE is also zero. Right. 
Now, after that, after C, D and D, E becomes zero, you can go to point E and you'll notice that, okay, now you only left with two member also, right? And the two is non-collinear, not external force. So both will be zero also, right? Meaning uh, C, E and E, F will be zero, right? Now, and then you go to the far left at point H. At point H, you can see that um, two, force, uh, two members, no external force, non-collinear, both will be zero also. So A, H and G, H will also be zero, right? Is there any other? I don't think there's any other, right? So you, in total, you have one, two, three, four, five, six zero force member in this question, right? Okay. Is there any more? All right, try this one. How many zero force member that you can identify? You can pause to think, and we'll discuss right now if you have thought about it. Now, you start with is point B, right? If you, you start at point B, you'll see that BG is zero. After BG is zero, you go to point G, you'll notice that CG is zero. Right? After that is zero, you, you focus at point C, you notice that CF is also zero. And after that, after CF is zero, you go to point F, DF is also zero. Right? So uh, there's chain reaction there. Right? So hopefully you can see that. Right? So that's for this question. Okay, still one more. Can you identify the zero force member? It's BD, right? Uh, you can hopefully you can see straight away or BD is zero force member. What about this one? Okay, hopefully you can see BD is zero and BE also zero after that, right? Yeah. So by this practice, hopefully it's already becoming almost automatic that you can see ah there's zero, zero, zero. But make sure if you want to say something is zero force member, it is actually zero force member. Why? Because if you make a wrong judgment, because if that is not zero force member, it carries certain weight, a certain force, but you suddenly stay from the beginning that's zero force member. Meaning that your whole calculation will be affected. So do not guess, do not blindly uh, assume. Make sure you understand why it's zero force member, right? Um, okay, so now we go to the problem solving, right? So now we have, so I put the picture here. So the question says, uh, load is given as shown so you have 600 newton and 900 newton there right you need to determine the force in all thrust members do not forget to mention whether they are in tension or compression right so just take a look at the picture if you want to copy copy it and we'll just straight away solve it so how to solve okay again we'll just show the free uh, not the free body diagram the diagram right is there any point where you can actually solve straight away because the, the first thing that you have to decide uh, in the beginning is whether you can straight away solve in the member or you can you have to actually solve the support reaction first right so is there any point or joint that you can solve straight away that's the question if you look at that you should be able to tell that point d point d you can solve right why because you only have two unknown and you have two equation all right so make sure you have taken care of the diagram for, uh, already because we'll use this space here right Right, so if you draw the free body diagram, free body diagram or at point D. Okay, so basically at this point, so you have 600 Newton, and then if you assume both to be tension, so I just assume everything tension, so that when the final answer becomes positive, it is confirmed tension when it is negative is confirmed compression right if you assume a mixed assumption then you have to keep always checking and for the examiner also they can give it, be confused so it's good if you have a systematic way of doing things anyway so you have here f d e and f c d right and you have the angle which is what which is three four five right Make sure you also know how it becomes 3, 4, 5 there, right? This basic trigonometry from the similar triangle 
but do not assume make sure you understand where that come from all right now so if you already have this free body diagram then you can just solve the summation of fx equal to zero if you take positive to the right for example then you have minus f d e 3 over 5 minus 600 equal to zero so f d e will be minus 600 5 over 3 Minus 1000 meter, right? Okay, is it the focus in this also? <laughs> All right, um, yeah, hopefully, you, have, you, you, you can see that, right? So, what does this mean? What does this negative mean? So, because we assume both tension and again outside this tension going out from the point is tension. So when you get negative, then it means this is compression, right? All right, and then you have another equation, which is summation of f y equal to zero, right? So basically, you have if you follow the free body diagram, then you have minus f d e four over five, right? But f d e is minus thousand according to the point, so minus thousand four over five, and then minus f C D zero. So F C D will be eight hundred meter. Is it tension or compression? It's positive, so we assume tension. So tension. Right. Hopefully you you follow. Right. So basically, after you have drawn the free body diagram, it's just equation of equilibrium as we have learned before right next what point can we go to right so hopefully you have already the diagram the original diagram so what point you can go to you can go to point c right because if you go to point c right now you have two unknown that you can solve if you go to point e you still have three unknown you cannot solve right so that's why you go to point c so free body diagram at point c so this one is quite straightforward so now how do we draw? So, because at point C, we have FCD. FCD is this one. So, this one is tension, right? So, meaning FCD is tension. So, this should be drawn like this. 800 newton. Why? Because it is in tension. Tension going out from the point. So, here is in tension also. F, B, C. And then we have 900 newton there. If you see tension here, then we'll have... M C D. Right, that is assumption tension. Right? Then you can do just do summation of F X equal to zero. Then you have minus F C E minus nine hundred zero. F C E equal to minus nine hundred Newton meaning what? Meaning compression. And then you can do summation of f y equal to zero. Upward is positive, for example, so eight hundred minus f b c equal to zero. Sorry, b c equal to zero. So f b c equal to eight hundred newton tension. Why? Because it's positive, and we assume everything tension from the beginning, right? And now what do we do next? Yeah, you can go to the next point, right? So in this case, you can go to point E, right? At point E, so free diagram at point E, right? So if you draw the free body diagram, basically, now, so from from DE, right? So DE is compression, one thousand. Compression. So you have to draw compression, then one thousand meter. If it's, it is going into the point, right? And then point C E is compression also. So it is like this also. Nine hundred meter. What else? And then you have F E A E. So this one is if you assume all tension. So F a E and F B right and the angle is three four five right so the angle is all three four 
Right. So I'm not going to show you every step until the end, but you should know what to do next, right? It's basically just summation of fx equal to zero and summation of fy equal to zero, and then you calculate and do try, and the, the answer should be fae is one seven one seven five zero compression. And then FBE seven five zero tension. Right. So that's the final answer based on the slide. Right. So yeah. So um, I put some picture because the, the the way you solve is just like that. Um, several things. One is if you remember. You have to see whether you can solve straight away or you have to identify the separation first. In this case, you can solve straight away, right? When you have any point with two unknown or less, right? So, um, and then you solve from one point to another point to another point. So, make sure when you draw the free boundary diagram of the next point, you really understand, okay, this is compression, so you have to draw it. This one? Compression, for example. This is tension, you draw it tension, right? So, make sure you understand that point. Right. So after this, because uh, I will put some additional picture um, which is not originally in the slide, but I'll just show you. We'll just go through in, in terms of conceptual and mind what, what you can do from point to point to point. Right? And for you, you can try yourself if you want. So I will not show everything because the step, step is just like this. Right? The concept is just like this. So what will I'll, I'm going through together with you is just... I'll show the picture, we'll discuss where can we start and then to what point, to what point, to what point, right? Um, and you can pause and you can try in detail up to you, right? So yeah, because this is additional to the original side. If you have the slide from the Aitaklim, it doesn't have some of this. This is from the book. Um, I just pick up some question for you just to have some exercise in your mind. All right. Now, take a look at this. Okay, so before you start, several questions. One, is there any zero force member? Because if you have zero force member from the beginning, you can simplify that uh, problem, right? In this case, is there any zero force member? There's none, right? There's no, no zero force member, right? Now, uh, and then, do you, can you solve straight away or do you need to solve the action at C and E? You can straight away solve, right? At point A, for example. If you start at point A, you have two unknown. You can solve A, B, and A, D. Right? And then, after that is solved, where can you go? You can go to point B. Right? At point B, you have all uh, another two unknown, which is B, C, and B, D. Once that is settled, then you can go to point D downwards. So, you already have solved the two, so you are only left with two unknown there, right? So, which is D, E, and C, D, right? So, and you can solve the rest, right? So, that's how you plan for this question, specifically. All right. If any question not clear, you can comment down below. Hopefully, inshallah, I'll try to answer the best I can. Okay, take a look at this. Is it easy? First question, is there any zero force member? There's no, right? There's none. Okay. So, where can you start to solve? Is there any point that you can actually solve? If you look at point A, there's three unknown, right? You cannot solve. If you go to point B, also there's three unknown you cannot solve. So, in this case, you have to solve first the support action. Meaning, what is the support action at D, which is DX and DY. And what is the support action at E, which is normal e upwards right okay right after that after you have got dx and dy and also ey for example or ne which point can you start with you can start at point d right because now you only have two unknown there right which is cd and de so you start there after you already know dx and dy you start at point d you can solve for cd and de 
After that, where can you go? C, you cannot steal because there's three unknown, but you can go to point E. Right? At point E, you have two unknown, right? C, E, and e, A, E. So, you can solve for the two, right? After that, where can you go? Basically, you have option, right? After that, if you go to point C, you have two unknown, right? Which is C, B, or B, C, L, C, F. But if you go to point A also, you can solve because you, have, you only have two unknown, right? Which is A, B, and A, F. So up to you which one you want to go first and then you go from there until all of the member is solved if the question want you to solve every member right? because some question do not ask you to solve every member they just pick solve what is this right so as long as you get until that point you are okay right okay so it's not difficult right okay what about this one is there any point where you can solve straight away or do you need to solve the support reaction first? Yep, in this case you have to solve support reaction first, right? Because there's no zero force member. There's no point where you can start to solve something, right? Um, if P is given, right? Normally in this question, P is given. So, um, you can, after you get AX and AY and also DY or normal D, you can start either at A or at D, right? Because you have two unknown, and then you go from there to another another point. Another point. You, I think you get the drill, right? All right. What What about this one? Hmm, this is quite interesting. What about this one? Is there any point that you can solve straight away? None, right? There's no. So you have to solve first the support action at A and D. But do try this kind kind of question because um, the structure can be confusing for some student, right? Because um, for example, AC and EC is actually um, not not in touch or in contact with BD and BF. For example, right? It's just one is in front, one is at the back, right? So yeah, just for you to try, right? So just so that you know you are not confused with this kind of question. Okay, so okay, so. According to the slide, that's the end of the slide. Um, we have completed 6.1 until 6.3, which is basically covering all the things that you need for trusses, for solving trusses, including a uh, method of join, including a zero force member. Right? So we have finished, and you can try all the questions that we just go mental gymnastics just now. You can try to actually solve on paper, right? Because sometimes the thing is, um, okay, important note. When it is chain calculation like this, right? If you make any mistake here at the beginning, it will affect the whole calculation. So please make sure in the exam, uh, avoid mistake, right? And it's not that anyone who intentionally want to do mistake, right? You do not want mistake. But if you have never done enough exercises, mistake tend to happen. So I do hope that you do try. You do. Um, what we did just now. Uh, I'm just going to, uh, through the question for you to be able to imagine what to do because that is crucial so that you can uh, imagine what you need to do for many type of different question, right? So that's why I always suggest that students do that. Right? They just flip, you just they just imagine the step to do each for each diagram. Hence, whatever diagram we can throw to you, you already know what to do, right? But to avoid actual mistake in terms of actual numbers, you have to actually pick some of the question and try on paper also, right? So that's my suggestion to you. Um, this is the end for six point and one until six point three for trusses. Uh, all the best. Then the next um, recording will go for uh, frames, frames and machine inshallah. See you then. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.